Hey everyone, I hope you're well. I've got a question for you. If you are a mobile network operator or someone working for a mobile network operator, I'm pretty sure that you're buying your mobile network equipment like radio network, core network, etc., from the same small group of network vendors. These network vendors design their equipment based on the same 3GPP standards. So the question for you is, how do you differentiate? And as a mobile operator, especially in a competitive market like the UK, can you really differentiate if all of your competitors are buying the same product, same services? How do you differentiate? How do you stand out? To understand why it's so hard to stand out now, let's take a quick look back. In the 2G and early 3G days, the spotlight was on voice and text services. Back then, service quality was everything. Networks relied on circuit switch technology to ensure reliability. So vendor discussions were naturally led by tech teams, technology teams, focused on delivering smooth, uninterrupted service, focusing on KPIs like CSR, drop call, and other basic KPIs. With 4G LTE, the game changed. Mobile data took center stage, and even voice and text services started to be delivered over data networks using technologies like VoLTE, Voice over LTE, and Wi-Fi calling. The rise of mobile data brought content into the mix, creating a huge demand for mobile broadband, high-speed mobile broadband. But mobile networks are shared resources, so guaranteeing a consistent quality of service, QoS, is always tricky. To manage this, many mobile operators turn to quality optimization solutions like video compression platforms, caching solutions like CDNs, etc., from niche vendors. And this is where the challenge around differentiation comes in. So you have a small group of vendors offering similar products and services to operators worldwide. Vendor discussions, still led by technology teams, where the focus is technical, which means things like network quality, network integration, interoperability, which is great, but that's not the primary goal of a business. The primary goal of a business is to look at business objectives. This made it tough for mobile operators to truly differentiate themselves in an increasingly standardized market. As mobile networks continue to mature and service quality differences become less noticeable, the traditional edge they offered is fading. This means operators need to explore new ways to stand out. But with standardized network technologies and just a handful of dominant suppliers, the focus often shifts to value-added services and bundled offerings. Even here, it's not easy to stand out. Mobile operators tend to offer similar packages, voice, text, data, TV, broadband security, and also specialized B2B offerings like unified communications. But the challenge remains that even in these areas, many mobile operators end up with very similar vendors, if not exactly the same. With such predictable portfolios, creating real differentiation becomes a tough challenge. Discussions often revolve around maintaining standard quality levels rather than driving genuine innovation. Take VoLTE as an example. It highlights just how standardized mobile networks have become. VoLTE ensures consistent call quality by sticking to strict benchmarks like keeping latency under 150 milliseconds and using the codec, AMRWB codec, at a bit rate of around 12.65 kilobits per second. These standards do a great job of guaranteeing reliability, but they don't leave much room for the operators to truly differentiate themselves, especially in well-developed markets. So what should mobile operators do then to secure their relevance in this increasingly saturated market? The key lies in unlocking the full potential of the mobile network by making it flexible which means moving away from a one-size-fits-all approach 
to designing networks that are tailored or customized to the needs of specific market verticals like healthcare, manufacturing, transportation, education, etc. This allows mobile operators to truly become customer-centric. Now the good news is that the 5G networks, more specifically 5G standalone, so these networks allow you to differentiate based on the network. But why is this network-based differentiation important? Because it allows you, the mobile operator, to position yourself for the market verticals aligned with your business goals. It puts you back in the driver's seat, letting you decide which market verticals to serve and enabling you to design and scale your network accordingly. This means you're investing in your network assets, but this time you don't have to be technology driven or settle for a one size fits all solution. Instead, you can be business driven, investing in your network where it pays off the most. And the enterprise sector is where market verticals give you the opportunity to specialize. For consumers, you can continue offering high-speed broadband as you already do, but with 5G, you can leverage its capabilities for your enterprise sector where you can truly differentiate and add real value. 5G networks are use case driven and they use a service-based architecture, SBA. Now, let's explore the 5G use case triangle. It highlights three main categories that define 5G's potential. Enhanced mobile broadband, EMBB, for high-speed connectivity, massive machine type communications, MMTC, for IoT networks, and ultra-reliable low-latency communication, URLLC, for industries like manufacturing. Now, these use case categories are not just some technical categories. These are business dimensions that enable you as a mobile operator to create customized solutions for different market verticals. Just to put this into perspective, here is what these capabilities really mean. MMTC. Smart cities can use MMTC to deploy thousands of low-power IoT devices nationwide, paving the way for fresh ideas in public infrastructure and services. EMBB. New types of MVNOs, mobile virtual network operators, focused on fixed wireless broadband, just fixed wireless broadband, can use EMBB to enter the market. For example, a small broadband provider offering services just for your neighborhood rather than trying to compete nationwide. URLLC. Manufacturing companies like car makers can rely on URLLC for ultra-low latency communication with 99.99% reliability. That level of reliability means that failure is not an option. Well, almost not an option because it's 99.99% and not 100%. And that makes it perfect for automating processes and handling operations with pinpoint precision. These are the tools that 5G networks provide to put you as a mobile operator in the driver's seat for creating new opportunities in the enterprise sector. One of the key capabilities that makes this possible is network slicing, which is only available in standalone 5G. Standalone 5G features a flexible 5G core network that allows you to virtualize your network, virtualize your mobile network. But this is not the old school virtualization that IT hosting companies have been talking about for decades. This is smart virtualization where you can create dedicated portions of your mobile network to deliver very different services. Network slicing allows you to create multiple virtual networks on the same physical infrastructure with each slice tailored to meet the specific needs of a particular customer or industry. Let's use an example to understand this better. Imagine this. You are a mobile operator working with a car manufacturer like Mercedes-Benz. With 5G's network slicing, you can create a network that is designed specifically to meet their business needs. But what does that mean? Let's have a look. Real-time automation and robotics. With 5G's ultra-reliable low-latency communication, URLLC, you can set up a dedicated network slice that responds almost instantly within one millisecond. 
This means robots and machinery on the production line can work together smoothly, improving accuracy, reducing mistakes, and speeding things up. Advanced Predictive Maintenance Another slice optimized for high-speed connectivity 1 to 10 Gbps, which can let sensors monitor equipment in real time. This way, any potential issues can be spotted early, so you can fix them before the downtime actually happens, which will save you time and money. Enhance Vehicle Connectivity A slice built for vehicle-to-everything V2X communication lets cars connect in real time with other vehicles, nearby infrastructure, and the cloud. For example, edge cloud platforms process data like traffic updates and vehicle coordination close to 5G base stations, reducing delays. This makes automated driving safer and helps traffic flow better. These capabilities are not just limited to automotive manufacturing, they extend across industries like healthcare, logistics, and beyond. 5G's flexibility allows mobile operators to serve a wide range of use cases, whether it's connecting thousands of IoT devices in smart cities, enabling real-time communication for autonomous vehicles, or supporting ultra-reliable networks for industrial automation. At the heart of this is the ability to tailor network services to meet the specific needs of different industries, creating opportunities for new revenue streams and stronger business partnerships. But for that to work, you have to make sure that your network selection, network design, is based on your business goals. But it's not easy because in many mobile operators, Vendor discussions are led by the technology teams that are part of the CTO organization. These teams tend to focus more on things like network interfaces and protocols than the business goals or business drivers. Now let's look at why this gap between technology and business exists. So one of the key reasons for that is because the value chain has evolved a lot over the last few decades. When mobile networks started, they were all about basic voice and text services. The value chain was much simpler back then, and service quality was everything. In that kind of network-centric world, it made sense for technology teams or the CTO organizations to lead discussions. But today, the value chain is much more complex. It's no longer just about the network. It's about the new use cases, business opportunities, and aligning everything to revenue goals. That's where the challenge lies. In many mobile operators, targets, objectives, OKRs, and incentives are not aligned between technology and business teams. For example, technology teams are often incentivized based on technical metrics, things like network performance or uptime, etc., while business teams are focused on growth and revenue type things. This misalignment takes the focus away from the business goals and keeps vendor discussions more technology-driven. So here's the bottom line. The real opportunity of 5G lies in the enterprise sector and not the consumer sector. But this opportunity window will not be open forever. It'll close eventually. And if your vendor discussions are still technology-led, you're probably falling behind the competition. At Comsbrief, I help mobile operators bridge the gap between the business goals and technology strategy to unleash the true potential of 5G technology. With two decades of experience in the industry, I provide independent and honest advice tailored to your needs without any complications. If this resonates with you, visit Consweep.com to check out my consulting services.